months, 18 months it took to apprehend Carter, and now this, 18 months. Yep, that's him, all right. <laughs> and to think that you two had Carter right in your hands and you let him escape. Of course, he looked different with the blanket over him and his eyes closed. Actually, what you're saying, Captain, isn't uh, totally correct. It isn't, huh? No, it isn't. Well, actually, it was the two detectives who were removing him from the courthouse who let him escape, not us. George is right, Captain. I mean, if we had him in our hands and let him get away, then you would be correct in saying that we let him escape. But since we never had him in our hands but only made contact with him, then you're incorrect in saying that we let him get away. Because the two detectives who were taking him out of the courthouse were the ones who actually had him in their hands and they let him get away. Are you finished? Eh, uh, I'm not sure. Well, I am. Then I'm finished. <laughs> the point is that you two had Carter right in your hands. And you had a chance to apprehend him, but you let him escape. Why? 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 We heard him. The only answer we can give you is that we didn't know it was Carter in the back seat. We didn't recognize him. It is required by every detective on this force to have committed to memory every mugshot of every wanted criminal in our files. Yeah, but we didn't know that he was wanted yet. George is right, Captain. When we stopped Carter, that was before we knew he was wanted. How could it be before he was wanted when it was right after he escaped? It's really quite simple, Captain. Had the dispatcher notified us that Carter was missing before we stopped Carter, then Carter would be in our custody at this very moment. However, the reason that Carter isn't in our custody at this very moment is that the dispatcher did not notify us until after we stopped Carter, and that's the reason that Carter isn't in our hands at this very moment. You get my point, Captain? I don't care. No. Oh, then why this meeting? <laughs> Get out! No doubt about it. That's Carter. But I can feel it. Something terrible has happened to my husband. Very interesting. Tell me, Mrs. Mitchell, did your husband act strangely when he left the house this morning? No. He was going to pick up his nurse at her apartment and then go on to the hospital. And neither one of them showed up at the hospital, right? No. Mrs. Mitchell... Your husband's a doctor, but what does he specialize in? Well, he's a plastic surgeon. Why, is that important? Could be, could be very important. Higginbottom, get Crook and Robinson in here immediately. Now, I don't mean to alarm you, Mrs. Mitchell, but we may have something that's very well related to your husband's disappearance. You wanted to see us, Captain? I certainly did. Well, I hope it's important. You know, we're very busy working on the Carter case. Well, that's the reason I sent for you. This woman has been telling me something that may very well be related to the Carter case. Oh, really? What is it? My husband has disappeared. When did you last see her husband, Mrs. Carter? Her name is not Mrs. Carter. She's Mrs. Mitchell. Her husband is a doctor, a plastic surgeon. A plastic surgeon? Ah, oh, go on, Mrs. Mitchell. My husband left the house this morning. He was going to pick up his nurse and then proceed to the hospital. He never got there. Did he pick up his nurse? Yes, he picked up his nurse, but they never arrived at the hospital. Now, let me ask you this, Mrs. Mitchell. How old is the doctor's nurse? Carol? 22? What has the nurse's age got to do with this? Well, I'm just trying to determine whether he really disappeared or whether he ran off with his nurse. How can you think that of my husband? He's one of the most respected plastic surgeons in this city. No offense, Mrs. Mitchell, but it happens all the time. Sometimes with psychiatrists, sometimes with psychologists, and even an occasional chiropractor. <laughs> You're disgraceful. Her husband runs off with a 22-year-old girl, and I'm disgraceful. <laughs> what are you doing? Give me a few more minutes, George. I think she's beginning to crack. Well, I don't know about her, but the captain is, so cool it. Now, let me handle it. Mrs. Mitchell, has your husband ever disappeared all day like this before? Never. And we've been married for 18 years. I tell you, something has happened to him. Maybe you're right about that connection, Captain. Maybe the only way to find Carter is to trace Dr. Mitchell and his nurse. I think you're right, George. Thank you, Mrs. Mitchell, for coming. We appreciate all the information you've given us, and the minute I hear something, I'll keep in touch. If, if it's money they want, I'd be glad to pay anything. If Frank Carter has your husband, Mrs. Mitchell, it's not money he wants. He wants a new face. If there's anything else you need to know, don't hesitate to call. We won't, thank you. Well, we'll get on it right away, Captain. We'll question everybody that had any contact with uh, Dr. Mitchell and the nurse in the last 24 hours. And move fast. If Carter did kidnap Mitchell, then we've got to get to him before he can change his face. I'm sorry, Captain, but I just don't go along with your theory about plastic surgery. Why not? Because if Carter wanted to have his face changed, all he had to do would be to put on a mustache or a beard. Why go through all the pain of surgery? I mean, if he wasn't a good-looking guy, it would be different. I mean, if he had a bald head and a flat nose and sagging jowls and a weak <laughs> chin. George, I think we better get started. <laughs> Robertson, 
just came in, sir. Well, it's about time. All right, gentlemen, sit down. The commissioner's been calling me every hour. He wants to know if there's any connection between the Mitchell disappearance and the Carter case. Now I want a detailed report. I want to know everything you did from the moment you left here. Hey, come on, take all this down. You want to know everything? Everything. Well, when we left here, we got in our car and had an argument. What about? Well, George wanted to go to Dr. Mitchell's office and check it out for clues. I wanted to take the car in and get it fixed. Every time I stop short, Lenny falls out of the car. That's unimportant. Go on. We realized that there was no point in sitting there arguing, so we compromised. That's wise. We didn't go to either place. <laughs> Excuse me, how long did this argument last? Oh, I'd say about 10, 12 minutes, wouldn't you, George? Closer to 15. Uh, put down 15. Would you please continue? We went to the apartment building to question the roommate of Dr. Mitchell's nurse, and the minute we pulled up in front of the apartment building, we had trouble. What happened? Lenny fell out of the car. <laughs> did you talk to the roommate? No, she wasn't in. Then where did you go? Back to the car, where we had another argument. Uh, and what was this argument about? The same thing. George wanted to check out Dr. Mitchell's office. I wanted to take the car in and get it fixed. How long did this one last? Oh, this was one of your quickies. I'd say five, six minutes. What do you think, George? Tops. We compromised right away. Oh. We decided instead to go to the hospital that Dr. Mitchell was on his way to this morning when he disappeared. Only this time I was driving. I don't care who was driving. What happened when you got to the hospital? George fell out of the car. <laughs> well, we did corroborate your belief that Dr. Mitchell and his nurse had been kidnapped. We talked to the gate guard. He saw Dr. Mitchell and his nurse drive up this morning. They got out of the car. Two men approached them. They talked for a moment, got back into the car with the two men, and drove away. Did the guard at the gate get a good look at the two men? He did. And they were definitely the two men that Lenny and I saw with Carter in the getaway car yesterday. And it's just like we suspected. Carter kidnapped Mitchell and is going to force him to change his face. Let's go, Lenny. Where to? To Dr. Mitchell's office, see if we can find a clue. I'll do the driving. <laughs> It's been two weeks and not one single lead on Frank Carter. And no sign of Dr. Mitchell or his nurse. And from the shape that they left Dr. Mitchell's office in, it's safe to assume an operation was performed there. And now we're looking for someone and we have no idea what he looks like. Captain. I think we've got something on the Carter Mitchell case. What is it? We've just booked a suspect, Jack Foster, alias Jack the Mugger. He specializes in forged documents. Go on, Higginbottom. We've booked him on suspicion of printing phony stock certificates, but he offered us some information on Carter if we make a deal. What kind of information? Two days ago, he got a call asking for a fake passport and a vaccination certificate. From Frank Carter? No, from Charlie Fraser, one of Carter's men. Fraser gave him a number to call when the papers were ready. This morning, he called that number. One hour later, Fraser was there for the papers. Now we've got something. All right, Higginbottom, tell him he's got a deal. Get the phone number and trace it. Give the address to Crook and Robinson. Now both you men get moving and get moving fast. <laughs> Morning, Captain. Oh, good morning. Sit down, gentlemen. I want to finish reading this communique from Israel. Excellent, excellent. What does it say? Carter was spotted by the Israeli police as soon as he got off the plane in Israel, and he's been taken into custody. That's great. What happens from here on in? We start drawing up extradition papers immediately. Do you think the Israeli police will let him go if they think he's a Nazi war criminal? When they eventually find out that he's not the man they're looking for, they'll extradite him. Sir, if you would like, I have a complete report on all the errors that were made by Crook and Robinson and their handling of the Carter escape and the Dr. Mitchell kidnapping. You know, Higginbottom, you ought to go see uh, Dr. Mitchell. Why? There's nothing wrong with my face. Oh, you have a fine face, all right. Except for one thing. What's that? Tell him, honey. You need a new mouth. <laughs>